This is a bonus episode of the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lay. Kaylee, you're a lender and you work with a lot of investors. Where do you see people getting the money from to buy rental properties? You know, for their first one, I'd say more often than not, they're going to utilize their their biggest asset, which is their primary residence. And then as they're getting going, you know, maybe after they have a couple of rental properties, what are they doing then? Well, I mean, one of the beauties of real estate investing is going to be the harvesting of the equity earned over time on the rental properties. And remember, borrowed funds are non-taxable. So as they acquire properties very commonly, and if they aren't doing this, they should be, utilizing ways in which to access the equity, harvest equity to produce more investments, more returns. And that's what we're going to talk about on the podcast today, how we can harvest equity to help our rental properties buy us more rental properties. On the show today, Chaley is going to share with us five different ways that we can tap into our equity to buy more rental properties. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each and help you decide which way is right for you to go. First, we'll take a really quick break. We'll thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Chaley. Do you ever feel like you're using too many tools to manage your rentals or maybe you're struggling to manage your rental finances? I wanted to introduce you to a platform to help you simplify your rental property finances. It's Baselane. Baselane is a rewarding banking platform where you can consolidate your rental finances while earning cash back and a high interest rate. Baselane also doesn't charge any hidden fees like traditional banks do. Baselane is also a rent collection platform where you can automate your rent collection so that you get paid on time every month and you're not wasting your time chasing down late payments. Baselane is also a simple and easy to use accounting platform where you can categorize your transactions and monitor your cash flow. Baselane is an all-in-one platform designed to help you manage your real estate business and save you time and money. The best part about it, it's totally free. You can learn more and sign up today. Just go to Baselane.com. That's B-A-S-E-L-A-N-E.com. Baselane.com. We're all investing in rental properties to make money, but you don't want to make money and then turn around and give it all right back to the government. The best way to maximize the money you keep is by lowering your taxes. And you want to make sure you're working with a CPA that really understands the complexity of how real estate taxes work. I'd recommend that you reach out to the InvestorFriendlyCPA.com. You may remember Assis. He's been on the podcast a couple of times. He's a real estate investor, and he does more than just prepare your taxes. He'll strategize with you. He'll set up a tax plan. And he'll make sure that you get every single deduction that you're legally entitled to. If you want to learn more, reach out to Assis at InvestorFriendlyCPA.com. That's InvestorFriendlyCPA.com. Rental Income Podcast. All right, let's just get right into it, into some of the ways that investors can harvest equity. And I think the first one that comes to mind is the cash out refi. Where are things at today? How much equity can you take out of a property today? Well, most, uh, just a straight 30-year fixed cash out refinance, most times is going to be limited to 75% loan to value. If it's a two to four unit, in some cases, depending on the product line, that might draw back to 70% loan to value. I think I would say a lot of people are hesitant on a full cash out refinance for a few reasons. One, we're in a high rate environment, but also um, it's less flexible, right? You're going to get a chunk of cash all at once delivered to you immediately. So you'll be paying interest on those monies uh, that may not be utilized right away before an investment or return can offset. So while it's certainly an option and, and a good one for some people, I think that most investors are looking for a little bit more flexibility. And the cash out refi, that applies to both a rental property and also a primary residence. Absolutely. And even a second home if it's viable. And is that always done with an appraisal or can you do a desktop underwriting or how how does that work? Yeah, it's it's largely dependent on the occupancy and the loan to value. An owner occupied is going to have a lot more success in getting an automated valuation. It's called a PIW, Property Inspection Waiver. Um, and or if it's an investment property, if it's a low loan to value, sometimes we'll see that PIW uh, when we pull findings. So uh, dependent on those factors. Okay. 
Now, I know that you've always been big on running the numbers, and I'm sure you run into this all the time, but for someone that maybe got a mortgage during the pandemic when we had those crazy low rates, does it ever make sense for someone to give up a 3% mortgage to get a higher rate so that they can get access to that cash? Well, I'm going to say uh, maybe an unpopular um, answer here is going to be 100% yes, it makes sense sometimes. It really depends on those variables and why I'm always pushing to do the math. Uh, one of the products that we, I think we'll talk about here today is called That All-in-One. You guys have heard me talk about it. It's a first lien HELOC, and it's a variable rate mortgage, and the fully indexed rate today is posting at 9.54, I think. Now, I have had opportunities, and I'm, I'm doing this every day, guys, so I, I know what I'm looking at. Um, there's a cool simulator that will allow us to compare these low, low interest rates that everybody secured back in 2020, 2021, etc. I can compare a 9.5 first lien HELOC against a 3% 30-year fixed, etc. And depending on the borrower's variables, their income, their spending habits, what they have left over at the end of the month, etc., many, many times, I would say even more than 50% of the time, this 9.5% HELOC is beating a 3% three fixed rate. People will hear this and think that's not possible. They just don't understand the uh, velocity of money or that arbitrage um, concept that the all-in-one encompasses. Yeah, let, let's talk more about that. Let, let's get into the all-in-one. Now, I know this can be somewhat complicated, um, so maybe we can keep this on a basic level, and if people have more questions they can maybe follow up with you directly. But like at a high level, how does the all-in-one work? So it is complicated, and it, it does take some time to unpack. I want to preface by saying that, gang, I've been doing, I've been in this space doing finance for investors for a very long time, uh, very long time. I, I should know more than the average, but important to note, it took me quite a while in looking at the all-in-one day in and day out before I was really able to connect the dots. So it, it does take some time. So please keep that in mind. I would, I would say here is the analogy or the comparison that I would give people that tends to um, set the stage. I want you to think about two fixed-rate mortgages, a 30-year fixed and a 15-year fixed. Both of these mortgages started at 400000 as the principal balance. The 30-year fixed locked at 4%, and the 15-year fixed locked at 7%. Without exception, everybody that I talk to is going to run to the 4% over 30 years automatically unless they understand the amortization that goes into long-term mortgage debt, okay? When in fact, the math, when you do the math, you will realize that it's that 15 year at 7% that will produce $40,000 less in interest accrual because it is the amount of time it's taken to pay that debt off. Hence the all in one, it is that velocity of money and how long it's taking to repay that debt, which is now in the individual's control. Um, I feel like maybe just pausing there and seeing if there are follow-up questions, Dan, or I can go a little bit deeper into it, but it does get kind of technical. Yeah, it, Without a visual aid, it's tough. It does. And, you know, I, why don't we leave it there? And if anybody has any follow-up questions, maybe they can talk to you directly. I know that you have a simulator that you can walk people through to see if it makes sense for them. And, you know, it, yeah. with all these programs, it's all so individual to your situation. And that's one thing you're really good at is, customizing things for people's situations. So, um, you know, I, I think that's, that's good for, for the podcast purposes, but let's move on to the HELOC because this is something that I think is an interesting tool to use to buy rentals. Um, and something that really wasn't available or very hard to find until recently, but now you actually offer a HELOC on rentals. H how does this work? So yes, uh, this is a recent addition to our product line. Super excited about it. Um, I will say that the CLTV, which stands for Combined Loan to Value, where you take the value of the home, uh, the maximum CLTV in this case is 60%. So it's just quick, easy math. Let's say the value was 100000 times 60%. 
We're going to take $60,000, and from that number, we're going to subtract the first lien. Let's say in this case, the first lien was $30,000, okay? There would be $30,000 left and available to then secure that second lien from. So 60% CLTV is on the low end of the spectrum for most individuals that have already mortgages on their rentals. So this will play out a few people, but just having access to it for those that it can work for has been huge. I mean, the response that we got when we sent out the original email on this was um, we couldn't we couldn't keep up with the demand and the phone lines were ringing off the hook that day. It was pretty cool. Wow. Wow. And so I, I guess this is also a good a good financing tool for anyone that maybe has one of those three, 4% mortgages and they have a lot of equity in their property and they don't want to give up that mortgage. This could be a, a good way for that person to tap into that equity. hundred percent right. agree. Yeah. This would okay. be a great way. Mm-hmm. So the, the only downside is just that 60%. So like you've got to have a really small first mortgage to be a good candidate for the HELOC. Or a really high value, right, right in relation right. to the first mortgage, yeah. yeah, to make that one work. Are there any restrictions on what you can use the money for? Nope. Okay, so it's just a checkbook, like a normal HELOC, and so and when you're getting a mortgage on another property, can the HELOC funds count as your down payment? Absolutely. Those are going to be considered sourced and seasoned funds. So long as you're on the loan, sometimes we find, and I'll just, I'll just maybe mention this. um, Mr. And Mrs. Jones own the home on title, right? They both have ownership in the home on title, but Mr. Jones is the only one on the HELOC loan. And then Mrs. Jones goes out to purchase because they're, you know, the same household purchase an investment property because she is not and wants to use those, you know, the HELOC funds because she's not on the loan, even though she's on title, those are not her source and season funds. She'd have to pull out what she needs, put it into an account, let it sit there 60 days and boom. And what about the appraisal? Is there a full appraisal on this? Uh, They're going to be able to choose. We can do on this product. So the valuation and appraisal requirement will be able to choose um, whether they do an AVM, and that's for loan amounts 200000 and below, an AVM is acceptable. Now, if they think, let's say they've done renovation or rehab work, et cetera, where they know that the full appraisal, you know, the cost of the full appraisal can be 500 bucks to 1000 bucks, but the cost of that is going to exponentially increase that value, which would be important to the line limits, et cetera. Um, they have the option to do that under uh, 200000 They can choose between an automated and a full appraisal. If the loan amount is above 200000 we are going to order a full appraisal. The next one that I want to ask you about is the HE loan. So th- this is different than a HE lock. Tell us what a HE loan is. Yeah, it, just so simple and so basic. It is exactly the same thing as your first lien mortgage, right? Your 3% or whatever, your 4% interest rate on that first mortgage, 30-year fixed. It's simply in second lien position. It's also a 30-year fixed. So whatever the amount is that you're able to borrow, it's going to amortize over 360 months at the rate that you secure, and you're going to make principal and interest payments every month. Additionally, like a, a first lien fixed mortgage, you're going to be taking all of that cash, whatever the number is, at once, and interest starts being paid immediately. So the HE loan, just like your first mortgage, this product lets us go to 85% combined loan to value in relation to the 60% combined loan to value on the HE lock that I just talked about. All right. So so I, I guess like the, there is pluses and minuses like when you compare the HE lock and the HE loan. With the HE loan, you can get a lot more money out of the property, but you've got to use it right away because you're getting, you're paying interest on it from day one where the HELOC is a little bit more flexible. Right. You're only paying for what you're using on the HELOC. So yeah, on the HELOC, we just advise our clients, we want to make sure that we're funding within, you know, 30, maybe 60 days of when you're ready to deploy it. If you're ready to deploy it immediately, great. We can even structure it so that we're funding on the HELOC within, you know, a day of closing on something else so that the title companies can talk to each other and the funds are being uh, dispersed appropriately at the same time simultaneously. Wow. Okay. That's a pretty cool way to do it. So if you find a property you're going to buy, you can buy that property and then use the down payment from your HE loan on a different property. 
Yeah, immediately. Right. As long as we sequence the timing appropriately. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. And yeah. you said that's a, a 30 year loan. It is. Loan. 30 year. Okay. It comes in shorter, shorter terms, but I'm going to talk anybody who will listen to me out of that. It's only going to work to your disadvantage. And we'll talk about that another time. But okay. Yeah. yeah 30 years is the way to go. Okay. All right. Now, another strategy, if you have equity in a property and you want to get all that equity out, is a 1031 exchange. For anyone that's not familiar, can you just give us a real high level explanation of a 1031 exchange? Sure. So you've got an investment property, uh, and this is going to be equivalent to something that you have not lived in two years out of the, the prior five. If you had, then it would not be uh, applicable to something called capital gains taxes, which is why more often than not, you're going to go into an exchange is to avoid the cap gains or capital gains tax. So again, if you've lived in the property two years out of the preceding five, this would not apply. You wouldn't need to do an exchange to avoid the cap gains. Otherwise, selling an investment property, um, you want to avoid, and cap gains taxes are, are steep. They're pretty hefty. So unless you want uh, the IRS to take a, a, a 30% bite or more out of your your um, proceeds from the sale, you're going to be looking at taking those proceeds from the exchange property, the property that's being sold, and then applying them to new acquisitions of like kind. And this can be really good if you have a property with a lot of equity. And, you know, I know a lot of people bought properties a few years ago. Those properties have appreciated and maybe the rents haven't gone up quite as much as the value. Like, have you seen a lot of your clients that have maybe sold one property and then done a 1031 and bought multiple properties? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'd say that's probably more common than not, where you're you're selling one and replacing for two, three, four, ten, ten replacement wow. properties if the equity is there. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, that that's a really fast way to, to grow if you can sell one property and, you know, maybe buy 10. That's that's pretty cool. So so basically, I guess just to summarize everything, there are a ton of different ways that you can get equity out of properties. You've just got to figure out which one is best for you. And if anyone has any questions or they want to maybe run some scenarios by you and, and see what you think is the best way to go, what's the best way for someone to reach out to you? There's so many different ways to get a hold of us, uh, Dan. We can be found on our website, of course. There's easy intake. You can find our online application there www.ridgelandinggroup.com. Obviously, you can call us. We're on standby, um, 855-747-4343. 855-74-RIDGE is the easy way to remember that. And then you can email us, info at ridgelandinggroup.com. And, and we're on all the social platforms too, so feel free to, to direct message, et cetera. Uh, we'll be here on standby, and we will do the math together. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for checking out this bonus episode. I'll be back with the regular interview on Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.